Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at the logical editor. So this is the first in a series of videos. I'm just going to give you an introduction to the logical editor and see some of what it can do. But if you don't know about it, the logical editor is a really powerful way of manipulating MIDI data. So it can do tasks for you that would take you ages to do and do detailed and hopefully interesting editing and selection and things like that uh, in a few clicks, which would take you potentially tens of minutes to do in some cases, depending on the length of the part you're working on. So the logical editor works on MIDI data. Hopefully you know this, but you may not. But each MIDI note has two values. It has value one, which is pitch, and value two, which is velocity. Uh, here you can see I've just set up a simple part with a ramp of velocities on here. And if we look at this in the list editor, we can actually see that data. So you see in the data one column, which is value one, we've got the pitch, which is C1 for all these notes, and then data two, we've got the increasing velocity going all the way up to 126 there. So we can see that there, again, represented a different way in the key editor. So the logical editor itself is found under MIDI and then logical editor, and it has two main sections. So we've got the filter section at the top, this here, so this picks the kind of data that you're going to work on and can be quite uh, picky, so it can narrow it down to something really specific. And then at the bottom here, we have the action section. So the action section works on the data that's passed through the filter and changes it in some way. So we're just going to start out nice and simple and just do some random velocity uh, changes. So at the moment, our filter just says one thing. It says type is equal to note. So in other words, if it's a note, it will pass through the filter and we can work on it. So this is normally what you want for anything when you're working on note data. As we will see in later videos, we can add quite a few things to this. There's lots of power to be had in the filter section. But for the moment, we're just going to leave it like that. Now, the action section here is where we're going to be spending our time today. And value one, as we've just seen, is the pitch of a note. And value two is a velocity. So we can click here on action target, click where it says value one and we can see we get all these different options and we're going to go for value two and once you've done that you get options which are valid for the thing that you've picked so here we've got a few different things we can pick add subtract etc mathematical things and some randomness a few other things as well which we will look at later on but today we're just going to start off with set random values between so once you pick that Parameter 1 and parameter 2 come up. Now, with MIDI velocities, our range is from 0 to 127. That would be a really extreme range, but let's just have a look at what that would do. So we'll leave parameter 1 as 0, change parameter 2 to 127, and then when I click Apply, it's going to apply this. So every note that makes it through will get a random value applied to its velocity. I click Apply, and there we go. So instantly we've got the world's least consistent uh, keyboard player on the keyboard. Now generally you wouldn't want something like that but often you want some variation in your parts so let's say a more sane range would be between 85 and 105 and then if you click apply you'll see you get that and every time you click it you get a new set of random values. Now notice that they really are random okay obviously we can have a mathematical discussion about the true nature of randomness but the, the point of this is it's very difficult to do that kind of thing yourself so obviously you could come down here and go yeah I'm going to draw on all these notes but doing it with this is a quicker once you know how to do that particularly if here we're just looking at four bars but you could be looking at a hundred a thousand bars of stuff but you are not sorry we are not very good at generating randomness we think we are but we we're not. So it's much better to let the computer do it. And as you can see, that's much quicker. And each time you get a new result. So that's setting velocity randomly. But what about doing pitch? Well, pitch is just value one. So if we pick value one here, we have to set our options again. So let's set it to some random values. So we're going to go set random values between. Now make sure you pick set random values between, not relative random values. So we will look at that a bit later on, but at the moment we're just going to have a quick introduction to this. So we're going to go set random values between and it gives us the entire or possibility of clicking the entire range of MIDI notes. Now putting them in can be a little bit long-winded, but 
often you can find if you click on it and then press a key on your MIDI keyboard it will pick that note for you so I've just pressed a key on my keyboard and I'm going to press middle C on my keyboard and now it's done that so we've got a two octave range now if I click apply we will see that the pitches of those notes have changed and now we get the very 1970s sci-fi sound of this Guaranteed to make you uh, think of the time when you did GCSE music and had to study serialism. That isn't hugely useful unless you are into creating really weird atonal noises. So for for making random synth sounds for your facsimile of a 1970s uh, Doctor Who soundtrack, that would be great. But for most music, it's not going to be. But we can do something useful to it. In the action section, you can see below there we have a plus button and that allows us to add another line. So we don't have to do just one operation, we can do more than one. So we're going to add another line. And in this second line, we're going to leave it on value one because we still want to work on the pitch. But now as our operation, we're going to click where it says not set. And now we are going to pick transpose to scale. Now what this does, this lets us pick uh, a key or root note and then a scale that we are going to be picking from. So just by making it C major, the notes will at least be all white notes. So if we just do that, it will make a little bit more sense, although it will still be random. So so you can hear it makes a bit more sense because now we've got seven choices rather than 12 in every octave and it can start to work. Now, each time we do this, we get a new random melody. And there often you will find there'll be little fragments of this which you'll quite like and go, oh, I, I can use that. Um, so you could maybe select the bits which weren't good. So remember that this will just work on the bits selected. So if you have just notes selected here, it's just going to work on those ones. And you can see those ones that I picked are now being randomised, whereas the others are staying the same. Now, while the major scale is a better choice than chromatic, um, there are others here. Now, there's, there's a couple of uses for this, so you can use it to, to help you learn what the notes are in a scale. But also, if we narrow it down even more, if we narrow it down to pentatonic, there's only five choices. Just click on there, and then we can apply that to all of them. And now it will make, again... So we can hear this. there's a bit more order in there because there's only five notes to be chosen from. And if we narrow the range, because two octaves is a bit big for a, a melody, so let's change that so that that note there is, let's say G. So we've got a, about an octave and a half rather than two octaves. And now we'll have... Now, obviously, on this example, this was just 16th notes. So we, we have just a note every 16th of a bar. Um, if you'd put in a rhythm already that you liked, you can use this to generate melodies really quickly. So I've, I quite often use this when I've run out of inspiration, uh, which is more often than I'd probably like to admit. Uh, just put in the right key and a suitable range. And then once I've got the rhythm in that I like, I can just press apply three or four times and normally get something that will then sort of spur me on to going, oh, I like that bit of that melody, I can use that and repeat that. So it's, it's a bit of an ideas factory. So this has just been a very brief introduction to the logical editor. There is an enormous amount to do here and I don't want to throw too much at everybody because certainly in my experience of teaching in classrooms, this is one of the greatest ways to get people to glaze over and frighten them off. But normally as soon as people get this and start using it, they can do all sorts of uh, interesting things with it. So I'm going to leave that here for now, but the next video in the session we will see how you can select things which can make your life a lot easier if you're working with complicated parts.